Hello everyone, thanks for joining me for another painting video. This is going to be straight watercolor and I'm going to be working on, or I am working on, the Paul Rubens 15 and a half by 10 and a half approximately watercolor paper. This is cold press and I'm wetting the entire surface of the paper down using the hake, also pronounced or rather correctly pronounced hake. You may hear it pronounced hake here in the U.S., but it is the hake brush from China. It is a goat hair brush, and it is the brand Pro Art, which is the Ron Ranson hake. And if you've never used this brush before, this particular brush allows you to paint in a fast and loose manner and tries to keep you from fiddling by using it. It's certainly not a detail-oriented brush, but this particular brush can be used in a variety of ways, simply by just manipulating the bristles. So I'm putting a little bit of paint out here. I'm not going to use a whole lot of colors, some ultramarine blue, some alizarin crimson, yellow ochre, viridian. And one of my favorite colors I like to use is the indigo. Indigo is a dark, let's say blue. Sometimes brands will have it oh, red or leaning toward the blue, depending on what brand you get. I'm also using a paper towel as well. And here I'm just going to take the yellow ochre and just apply for a background to the paper. Just very random. When painting with watercolor, I find it's best to do things quickly and just allow for random events to happen. Now here's the ultramarine blue. Again, I'm putting this on somewhat randomly. I'm leaving some areas where we can imagine some light might be shining through the sky. Just kind of dabbing that in until I'm happy with it. Most of my scenes are made up, something in my mind, and I just kind of go with it. I like to paint from imagination. I find it less restrictive than trying to copy or, you know, work from a photo. Okay, so now that's down. I'm going to take some more of that ultramarine blue mixed with a little alizarin now. And that's going to create a nice purple color that's going to go over the top. And we're just going to do that sort of like you would imagine maybe some cloud formations. Remember when working with watercolor, they tend to dry flatter and lighter than what you put down initially. Just trying to push the paper there to get rid of that glare. There's always a little glare depending on what camera angle you're on until the paint dries. And we'll just work around that for now. So I'm just kind of dabbing that, blending that in a little bit. And a little bit on the bottom where we might have some foreground. Now I'm taking a dry, clean hake type brush. This is a larger one I have. This is a generic, no-name type uh, one that I have. This one is just dry, no paint on it, no water. And I'll use these, I'll have extras for blending. After I put it on, I'll, I'll blend and it creates some soft tones, a lot like an oil painting. Being careful not to close off our area of light that was created. Now you see we have some soft clouds some light coming through. 
And you can start to imagine what else you'd like to put there. You'd like to put trees or mountains. I'm going to go ahead and put some mountains. I'm going with the ultramarine blue. It's best to stay within the family of colors that you've sort of chosen, which is why I lay them out on my palette. I used to work from a palette, but now I find myself laying out the colors initially, at least for the sky and then going from there. So now I'm just going to make some different tones just to vary up the mountains a little bit. And we're going to do something a little different here. I'm going to dab out the highlight side of the mountain or where there might be snow uh, on the mountain. And I'm going to use that using, while it's wet, a kitchen towel or paper towel. And the paper towel might be a little wet. You might have to flip the towel around as you pick up paint. But you can lift off color here using the paper towel and create some convincing little, little details very quickly. Same for the cloud areas. You can actually take your tissue and you can lift away and create before it dries. It's very important before it dries. And you can lift away some of the paint and you can create some clouds. And this is just one way to do clouds. You can use white gouache. You can use the a, a wet, clean hake brush. Uh, you can leave white areas. There are many ways to approach it for a different look. Now, it looks a little messy here now, but we'll, we'll clean this up. Again, with the clean, dry hake brush, doing a little bit more blending. Same thing in the mountain area. While it's still wet, you can continue to work with it. You have a few minutes. I'm going to take that paper towel again with a little moisture on the towel. And just continue rubbing away some of the paint. And just kind of softening the bottom. And really what you want here is shapes. Once the mind sees the shape, you'll the viewer will figure it out. And they should all have relatively the same slope on them. Just softening the bottom there with that clean brush again. A little bit more softening up in the sky, just to clean that up a little bit. There we go. Now you can start to see what we're after. Now we're going to go ahead and make some distant trees, and we're going to use the fan brush. And the type of fan brush I like to use, I like to use a stiffer fan brush, not those really soft ones. This should be like hog hair or, you know, heavier bristles. And you can utilize these bristles the same as you would the hake brush to create a variety of shapes or foliage. You can use the, you can use the hake brush for this too. But I find the, the size of the fan brush works well for me. Now I've added a little viridian. I think this is probably just a little uh, too much on the cool green side. So we'll, we'll make a little adjustment to that. Important thing when you're painting is to have fun and try not to worry about the results. Try to leave room for 
randomness. It'll be what makes your painting unique. Don't think of mistakes as mistakes. Think of them as um, just fate. There are things that happen in the painting and let the viewer work it out. So I've come in with some indigo here and I'm going over that run of trees here. It's creating an interesting dimensional effect. Turn the fan brush sideways and you can make very pointy trees very quickly. And you'll notice we've immediately pushed the mountains back a little bit by adding these. Now I'm going to put some shadows or some reflections, whatever this ends up being here. A little, little reflection maybe down below using the fan brush. Maybe there's some water here. Darken up that, sh that uh, the line there where the trees meet the ground. Okay, so let's use the fan brush to make a nice pine tree, evergreen type tree. And I just kind of go back and forth as you would imagine in your mind the shape of a tree like this would be. And I never just paint one by itself. I like to put it either a second tree or even a third tree. And if I put any on the other side, then I'll use either one more or one less. As you see me doing here, you don't want to put two on each side. It's a little too uniform, in my opinion. But having trees on the sides or, or things like that kind of help um, frame your, your picture. It's creating a frame around the center point, which the viewer is going to lock into. And it keeps your eyes from bouncing outside the painting because you see the tree to the left, you see the tree to the right. It doesn't give you really any escape to wander your eyes outside the painting and then you're done. So from a compositional standpoint, trees can do that in a landscape painting. And if you're doing like three trees like this, try to make the trees different heights here. I'm just going to add a little more foliage down below. I'm sure a lot of you are like me and you get to the bottom and you're not quite what, sure what to do with the foreground. So I've taken a little white, this is just white watercolor, titanium white, and I've added a little bit to the green, and I'm dabbing that on as almost like a highlight color. This could be snow, but it also helps break up the green of the tree a little bit. And when this dries and it all kind of blends together, it'll have a very nice look to it. Again, just using the fan brush and following where you would think branches would be. Again, the important thing when you're painting is have fun. And, you know, it's, it's a good stress reliever. So you want to, when you're painting, your mind tends to focus on, it, on what you're doing quite a bit. So you tend to forget about, you know, things that are bothering you or, you know, things like that. That's what makes this such a great uh, pastime to take up is painting because it's you know you're doing this thing you put your music on maybe in your headphones and you're in your own world this is a different world and that's why i paint tranquil scenes calming scenes things that are relaxing it should be that for you don't sweat it if you have a something in the painting that wasn't quite the way you intended it just let let it happen 
and you can always move on to the next painting and you can say, well, I really didn't like that, so I want to make sure that doesn't happen on the next one. But just because you don't like it doesn't mean someone else might not look at it and either want to buy it or really love something about it, you know. So if it's just for you, which is fine, it should be first and foremost, Paint, painting should be for yourself. But if you have any intention on showing these to other people, post them, you know, share them and get over the fear of sharing and see what kind of responses you get. They'll be better than you expect. I can tell you that. A lot of people are hard on themselves. In our Ron Ranson group on Facebook that we have, um, you have people post and they post some really great work and they are, you can tell in their post, oh, this, this one was a problem for me. I had this issue. And it's like, if I looked at it and they didn't say anything, I would just say, wow, this is really, really great work. So, you know, don't focus on that. So I'm taking the plastic card now and I'm creating where there might be a little bit of a line here where the trees meet the ground and, and over here. This breaks up the darks, creates little areas of light, little counter change, which is the contrast. If you hear the word counter change, that's contrast between dark and light. And that's another thing that sort of interests the mind and the eyes is you have a dark and then a light next to it. And it makes for a more interesting painting. So when I paint these days, I tend to go a little darker than I think I should. And I let that happen for contrast sake. And again, it does help to break up solid areas where there's just, it's, it's more or less a dead spot in your painting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm taking the hake brush and I'm going to just create a foliage area as if you were looking through. Um, this is pretty, you know, common. You'll see this in a lot of paintings, but it works. Um, some grass sticking up and it frames out the bottom of your painting. So I'm using some indigo mixed with some blue. And then over the top, we'll do some highlights with yellow ochre. And here's your yellow ochre. You want to use this on a relatively dry, not a lot of water on your hake brush, and take advantage of those bristles, those pointy bristles, and press that into the paper and have a good, a fair amount of, of the paint, neat paint. We call neat paint straight out of the tube. Um, so you, a lot of times I'm working with, and I get this question is, do you work with the paint straight out of the tube? Pretty much, yeah, because the hake brush has water in it already. So I'm not like mixing, like you'll see like Turner or something like that back, you know, in his day, he he would put paint in bowls and his water, his color would be very watery. We, we're relying on this hake brush to carry the water for us. So the hake brush always has water on it. If you squeeze it out, you'll see how much is in there. I have three, if you watch my videos on controlling water with the hake brush, you'll see there's sort of three. There's, there's a fully wet hake. There's half as much moisture on there. And then there's one where the brush is just damp. So you want stronger colors? Well, then squeeze some of the water out of your brush. If you're just starting out and you're doing a wash, you're going to have a fully loaded water amount on your hake that's going to be your wash that's a very thin amount of paint on there when you as you move forward in your painting as you come closer to the viewer you're going to use less and less water now here comes my what i like to call sunshine in a bottle 
and I'm using a little more orange. So usually I use a yellow ochre. This has orange in it because I want to sort of contrast against that yellow area there. And the way I make this is, people ask this as well, I fill it about halfway with water and I put about an inch or two squeeze out of from a tube of paint. And then I shake that. And you'll want to be careful because when you spray that, you know, you'll get little little dots of paint that will, you know, if you're in a room, you want to have, you know, just cover your with paper or whatever because it'll spray. It'll get on your easel and it'll, you know, it, it does make a little bit of a mess. Not too much, though. I mean, it, but, you know, just, just to, you know, be careful with that. And you can wear a mask if, you know, most of the colors I use are non-toxic. So what am I doing here now? I'm, I decided I wanted to make this mountain a little bit bigger. And I'm going back in with the tissue. I sprayed it with that orange and it kind of ran down a little bit, which I wasn't intending, but it's okay because I think it's going to... I really was thinking earlier I'd like the center mountain to be a little taller. So here I'm just coming in with that wet tissue again. And I'm just going up into the sky where that paint ran down. And I'm just going to make that mountain a little bigger. The shadow isn't really making a whole lot of sense, so we'll have to do something with that. And I just picked up a little, little bit of paint from my easel that I had squeezed out and dirtied my tissue a little bit. I'm just kind of rubbing that on manually. From a distance, as you can see, it, 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 it looks pretty realistic. Just blending that in a little bit. Okay, this one here, we're going to call this one done. Take a look at it in the mat. Just going to give it a little spray to help kind of blend things a little bit. And here is the finished product. I'm pretty happy with it. I hope you enjoyed this painting video and it helps you and inspires you to go on and create your own work. Thanks for joining me, everyone, and I will see you next time.